Kevin Benedict, Independent Mobility Analyst, reporting from Chelsea, UK, right outside of London Central. And I have the pleasure of spending time today and being able to interview um, my um, my guest, who's the Managing Director of Place Workers, um, Oliver Kalusha. Oliver, thanks for joining us today. Welcome back. So you work out of Germany. That's where you're headquartered. And you guys focus on uh, developing mobile solutions for the SAP market. Is that correct? That's totally right, yes. Now, there's a lot of different software solutions. There's a lot of different middleware. There's a big demand for enterprise mobility. There's a lot of back-end systems out there. Mm -hmm. So what does place workers bring to the table that adds value to that mix? Well, what we do is... We focus on SAP solutions and our value is that we don't focus so much on a certain product. We step back usually, first talk to the client about his needs, about what he wants to do, about his business process. And then we try to find a solution inside the boundaries of the available solutions that we have. Let's say if you have an SAP server, a mobile infrastructure server, whatever available, um, usually, you have one device registered with one server for one user. So, first time the user connects to the server, he gets an ID, and the next time this, the data is assigned to that user, um, it goes down to this device. For example, if you come to field service in refineries, refineries have special needs for special devices, and device is extremely expensive for these those are in, uh, intrinsically safe? Yes, the X1 is intrinsically safe. Different names for that, depending on which area you are. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, intrinsically safe is the right word for that. And such a device, a usual PDA, it looks like a brick and it can easily cost about 5,000 euros without problems. Wow. So comparing that with a normal iPhone, iPad, whatever, um, Android device, which you can get from between 200, 300, 400 euros, that's a lot of money. So people, uh, these companies share the devices, um, and which means at the end, you need to find a solution that an order that is usually assigned to either a work group or a person is then assigned to a device. And regardless which device the user grabs in the morning, his order is on his device. So. Find, find solutions like that. Find solutions when people are out in the field and they want to create a notification for that function location, having the correct function location on the device with the latest information available. Let's say you are out there and the pump leaks and you say, okay, let's create a notification for that pump. You want to know, has somebody else done that before? Without going back to the office and checking everything. On the device, it is available which means it is available on the device because you're out in the field. You don't have necessarily connection to your backend. It's quite unusual that you have that on a, on a production environment because there's so many metal, so much metal around. You have no VLAN coverage, no Wi-Fi coverage, no GPRS coverage. Um, so you have to rely on the information you have on the device. And find solutions like that. That's our work. Very good. So you're bringing industry knowledge and understanding the limitations of various mobile solutions. That's our job, yeah. Yeah, and, and then, and so as a business analyst role, you're studying all the requirements, all the functional requirements, all the business requirements, and then laying it out in developing the solutions and putting it together. That's pretty much correct, yes. Very good. Well, um, what kinds of industries are you focused on today, then? Um... Mostly it's ISU companies, companies to deliver electrical service to the community, oil and gas, as well as companies doing public service or customer service. It's wide open, as long as it's, as it's um, yeah, mobile asset management. So how long have you guys been engaged in enterprise mobility projects? Enterprise mobility in MAM area since 2004. We do mobile projects since 1995. Since 1995? Yeah. That's a long time. 
Very nice. And we were talking earlier how you were doing CRM and business intelligence apps back in the 90s. Yeah, it was fun. It was really fun. <laughs> Getting data down by modem with a very, very low bandwidth. Um, preparing customer presentations, CRM presentations um, at home at your desk. Well, we built an application that the salespeople could get the latest sales numbers from the service, build some bar charts with them. It was all predefined. So you could say, okay, I'm a company selling cars and my Volkswagen um, dealership, because we have such a nice um, advertisement area or an advertisement um, has been good in the last year uh, compared with Peugeot or whatever. And you could build your presentation with all that and build the latest videos inside. And the next day you showed up with the client side and you said, oh yeah, fantastic, but how do you compare, how do you, how, how do you do comparing with not Peugeot, but Volvo? And then you could have Volvo inside. It was fantastic. And it was 1995. Wow. And so now the UIs are much different, the devices are different, the broadband internet speeds are much different, but the same process on the back end. Yes. Very good. So if you could give advice to the listeners and, and the viewers today, um, what advice would you give them about how to um, start a mobile project and what to think about as you're preparing to start an implementation? Well, I think the very first thing that they should think about, and most of the companies don't do that, funnily enough, where do you want to be in five years? Not so much focusing on platforms, available devices, which most companies do, by the way. No, where do you want to be in five years? What is your need in five years? Get an expert and tell him, okay, there we want to be in five years, and get some advice. Because what we see is, we are in the market, as I said, for 15 years, mobile infrastructure, SAP area since 2002, very early. We do nothing but mobile asset management since 2004, so we have a huge and long history there. Um, and most companies today say, we do enterprise mobility. Yes, we do. But they've never done anything before like that. They have perhaps built an HTML5 application, have mobilized an online application, onto a mobile device like an iPhone or an Android phone, but they have never done enterprise mobility if it comes to plant maintenance. So get an enterprise expert on board with a history in enterprise mobility and tell them, okay, in five years we want to be there. What is available today? It changes so fast. Um, how can we do that? How do we start? And then start small. Don't do a big thing. Just start small and increase that. Gain knowledge. Talk to the people that have to use it and while you talk to them, give them earlier solution, they can prove it, they can test it and they can come back with feedback, optimize your thing and with the next thing, with the next rollout phase that enhance the application and enhance it again and enhance it again. It sounds like a long project but on that way you have, you don't make the typical mistakes of doing something the customers don't like because it's not usable at all, um, being on the right track having short implementation circles. These are the three recommendations I can make. Great. Well, Oliver, I want to thank you so much for sharing with the audience today. You're welcome. Thanks a lot for having the opportunity.